And the decline in church attendance, except in London because of some of the dynamic churches here, is monstrous in the United Kingdom. So missional means this, that we are always on mission. The moment we step out of our doors or the moment we invite some people into our doors, which we must do more and more, we are missionaries. Listen to this, John chapter one, Jesus was a missionary. There always used to be this old school phrase, God loves missionaries. He had, one only, he had only one son and he was a missionary. But I would say this, Jesus was missional. Listen to these words. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Through him, all things were made. In him was life. It goes on and on, okay? And then suddenly it says, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, that world did not recognize him. Verse 14 is what this is all about. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Let's make this fact plain. Jesus never had to come to earth. I wouldn't have left what he had. He had a big time gig going on. It was great where he was. But you know what? He realized the only way was to be missional, was to come and live among the people and live the kingdom of God and live the rule of God and live what it is to be a Christian. And obviously he, 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 he modeled it. And so we are called, okay, this word missional, don't get hung up on the word. Just understand that it means no longer must we have a mindset that things, I go away to do missions. We need to realize as a body of believers, we are constantly on the mission field. We are surrounded by myriads of different faith beliefs, different understandings. We're surrounded by pluralistic culture, which says whatever works for you works, but that's not my way. We, we can't let that happen. Everyone around us, so many people around us, percentile, it's probably 97% of the culture around us does not know God. And that must strike us and that must change us. We must realize we must be missionaries. And as a church, we mustn't function just to be here. We must function to reach out to culture. Find, secondly, the life. What does a life of a Christ first church look like? Simple. We look to the lifestyle of Jesus. Simple as. A Christ first church must model and embody the lifestyle of Jesus in its given generational, cultural, contextual environment. Simon, why do you do that? Because it's important. I'm gonna say it again and then explain it. A Christ first church must model or embody this lifestyle, the lifestyle of Jesus in its given generational, cultural, contextual environment. Here's what I mean. You would do missional church very different in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe than you would in Watford, England. Very different. There's a given generational cultural context there and there's a very different one here. We're called to do it here. We're also called to do it from 2009 and on. We're not called to do it in 1960, 1970, 1912, not even in the 1990s. Things have changed rapidly even since then. We have, I'm gonna say it again, a given generational, this is our generation, cultural context. And we need to live like Jesus in this generation, in this culture, and in this context. We don't need to live like Christians live elsewhere. We need to live as God would call us to live here because it's very different here than in other places. It's very different here than it is in Richmond. Watford's not Richmond. You may say, Simon, you're, 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 you're pulling hairs. You're... It's true, okay? A church in Richmond, you've got this many people in it. We're not worried about tithing. We're gonna have millions coming in a year because you don't have people who are on benefit. Richmond is Richmond. So there's a different generation, there's a different cultural context. We live in a generation which is drastically different than the one which passed before it, or which is even still, in, there, is, there, is, there is generational clash in this church, massive generational clash, okay? I assure you, I assure you, X1 is very much not important to a lot of you. X1 is very important to a younger generation. Why X, what's the X? X1, what do, you, what do you mean? And I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be apologetic about it because God has called us to lead this church in this culture, in this context, and in this generation. And it's important that we understand that. So what is it? 
A life of Jesus, I think, again, could be multiple things, but I want to do it simply. Obeys, loves, and serves. Obeys. Jesus said, I have come to obey the Father. John 15, verse 10. Again, in John 18, verse 11, he says, I am come to fulfill what the Father has given to me. He's praying in Gethsemane and says, not your will, but not my will, but your will be done. Jesus came to fulfill the will of the Father. So we must be an obedient church. To me, that's Romans chapter 6. Read it again. Is what I mentioned last week, but it's a rising, dying lifestyle. It's a life of baptism. It's a life of dying to self and rising to live against sin, to live against the the works of the devil and to live out the lifestyle of Jesus. That's what we're called to do. We're called to obey. There is things in here we must obey. We don't have sex before marriage because the Bible says we shouldn't because Jesus didn't. Okay? We don't abuse and destroy relationships because Jesus didn't. We live differently because Jesus lived differently drastically differently in his time. And we want to live like Jesus in this time. We want to obey the words of the Father. We must be a loving church. It came through today. Thank you again. And the love of God must be reflected by us to culture. John 13, verses 34 through 35. I'm sorry I'm rushing, but I need to teach into this and time is running. John 13, 34 through 35. Love one another as I have loved you. A new command I give to you. You know why it was new? Because Jesus displayed the level of love it takes to love like God. You know what love that was? Walking up a dusty hill with your back just in shards because you've been, you've been beaten and taking a cross upon your shoulders and dying. That's the level of love. A new commandment I give. Don't love like you think love is. Love like I've shown you love. So a Christ first church loves. 1 John 3, verse 16 through 19, we mentioned this when we were talking about a, 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 a totally cultural love for others. If you don't love your brother, you don't love God. That's, that's just Johannine theology. That's it. It's very easy to raise hands and say we love God and then go out there and show no love to a dying culture. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus did the opposite. Okay? He showed his love. So we're a church that loves. We're a church that serves. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who demanded, or, uh, who should have demanded a red carpet everywhere he goes, says in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, I have come not to be served, but to serve. 